Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about gravitational lensing, which is one of the key results from general relativity, which we covered in previous videos. Now a quick recap on general relativity. What general relativity tells you is that gravity is effectively curved space-time. In other words, mass curves space-time. And when you curve space-time, that means that objects no longer move along straight lines. Why is this? Well, imagine walking on the surface of the Earth. You walk from point A in a straight line. Eventually, if you walk long enough, you go all around the Earth and reach back to your starting point. Or indeed, the paths of planes across the surface of the Earth look like curves because the shortest distance between two points in a curved space-time or in curved surface is not necessarily a straight line. So what does that tell you? That tells you that as mass bends space, the path of objects, and that includes light, will bend because of the bending in space-time. And that is ultimately the cause of what's known as gravitational lensing. So what exactly is gravitational lensing? Well, here I've got a very simplified schematic. This is where you are. This is a massive object in between, could be a galaxy, another star, whatever. And this is a distant point. Again, could be a galaxy, could be a star. This is my attempted representation of a star. Now, usually light from a star, of course, comes out in all directions. And you would only see this beam that comes directly into your eye. What happens in gravitational lensing, though, is some of the light beams come like this. And as I said before, this mass here bends curved space-time, so this no longer travels in a straight line. If you follow through the maths, it actually comes around like that and comes to the eye, and obviously a corresponding beam from the other side. Therefore, what the eye sees projecting back is the appearance of a star here and the appearance of a star down here. What does that look like in reality? That looks like a ring, because the eye is seeing a ring in three dimensions around what the original position of the star might be. This is called an Einstein ring and was one of the strongest predictions of general relativity that where a star is directly behind a massive object, a ring shape would be produced around it. Now this is hugely important result, not only because it demonstrates general relativity very strikingly, and here are a bunch of pictures of Einstein rings that have been observed, so nail on the head, but also the key use of gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing, the amount that light is bent, depends only on the mass intervening, your line of sight, and the object behind, the object being lensed. This is a very powerful method, therefore, for measuring mass. Why do we need that? Well, first, there is no set of cosmic scales, right? You have to use indirect methods in order to weigh things. But more importantly, a lot of matter in the universe is not observable, the so-called dark matter. And if you apply the equations of gravitational lensing to galaxies, clusters of galaxies that intervene our line of sight with more distant light-emitting objects, you actually find that the amount of matter, the amount of mass, the gravitational pull, cannot be explained in any way by just the observable matter within that galaxy. In other words, there's a huge amount of mass that's completely unaccounted for, that is not emitting light, but is exerting a gravitational pull. And astrophysicists and cosmologists use gravitational lensing in order to make these weight measurements. And in fact, me myself, during my own PhD, this was exactly what I was doing, modeling clusters of galaxies and the dark matter distributions within them using gravitational lensing. And so therefore that sets up our next video, which will be on that precise to topic. What is dark matter? How do we know it's there? And what implications does that have for cosmology?